If your app feels clunky, your queries are slow, and your schema is a mess, the chances are it's not your code, it's your database design. In this video, I'll share four things to keep in mind to make a better database design and make your life easier. My name's Ben Brum, and I help software developers get better with SQL. Let's get into it. Why does database design matter? A good database design makes your life easier as a developer in three big ways. First, it means easier maintenance. A better design is easier to maintain and change, and has fewer bugs in the database and in the code. Secondly, it has better performance. The indexes can work better, and the queries are most likely simpler and perform better than a messy database. Finally, it means simpler application logic. This leads to simpler and easier to write code, which is less messy and less buggy. So, investing time in a good database design can save you a lot of effort later. Let's get into the tips. There's one thing you can do before you jump into creating a diagram with all of your tables and columns, or writing your SQL statements. I recommend writing down a few sentences that describe what your database is for. What is it supposed to do? What's the goal? What kind of information are you storing? This can help you identify the tables you may need to create. I can also determine the scope of what you want to store, which helps in deciding what to include and what not to include. For example, let's say you're building a database for an online bookstore. You might write, this database will allow customers to place orders for books. Each order includes one or more books. Authors can have multiple books. This allows you to get a good idea of what your database is about. Now you can look for the nouns in that description. In this example, they could be customers, orders, books and authors. These are likely the tables you can start with. A common mistake is thinking that you need to get the perfect design right from the beginning. Back in the day, I used to work on waterfall projects. This meant you would have an analysis phase, and once that was agreed and signed off by everyone, the project team would move into the design phase. The design phase would include UI, application, and database design. Once that was all approved, we would move into development. This meant that it was very hard to change the database in the future. However, most teams these days, in my experience, work in a more agile manner. This means that you can make changes to things in the future as you and the team learn more. You don't need to get the design perfect and 100% understood from day one. Your design will evolve. You'll learn things, requirements will change, and the database schema should adapt to all of this. The key to this is to start with a good design based on what you know and what you need to do, but be ready to adjust it as you go. SQL tools these days allow you to make changes without starting over. One of the most important parts of a good database design is relating your tables properly. This is how your data stays connected and how to avoid a range of other issues in your database. To do this, make sure every table has a primary key, which is a column that uniquely identifies each row. Then, for each table that needs to be related, ensure they have a foreign key, which is a column that refers to the primary key in the related table. Keep doing this until all of the tables that need to be related are related. This makes your database more robust and easier to query. Once you have your database design, the next step is to create the database for it. How do you turn the design, which is essentially a few boxes and lines, into a database? You convert it into a series of SQL statements. Many database design tools have a convert to SQL feature, which will take your design and generate a bunch of create table statements for you. Lucidchart, which is the tool I use, has this feature. If you use the built-in diagramming tool within your SQL editor, it probably has this tool as well. If it doesn't, or if you're using pen and paper, you can manually write the create table statements yourself. You can create the tables using SQL, then use insert statements to add in the data that you need. You'll then have a functional database that you can work with. These tips are just the beginning of what can be done when designing a database. If you want to go deeper, check out my course, Effective Database Design. You'll learn how to go from an idea to a complete design and implement it using SQL. You can use the link in the description. You'll learn by creating your own database from scratch and walk away with a solid understanding of what makes a great database. So check out the course if you want to improve your database design skills. Thanks for watching.